when you look at honda through the years in the indian market you'll notice that they've been straying away from little pocket rockets further and further away each and every year the closest thing that they have to a pocket rocket or the smallest offering that they currently have is the amaze but around five years ago there was this the honda brio which was actually amazing see what i did there and this was a really good car but people didn't buy it because it just wasn't compatible with the Indian market and eventually they didn't sell enough units to make it sustainable. So today I'm here to tell you why the Honda Brio is an overlooked pocket rocket and welcome to the Drivers Hub, I'm Soham Saraf. The Honda Brio was launched in September of 2011 in India, targeting the compact hatch segment. The urban jungle where Maruti Suzuki Swifts, Hyundai i10s were absolute kings. Honda decided to bring a car that competed by being more fun to drive, have higher safety standards and having a proper youth appeal. But they ignored the fact that the car was missing out on a huge must for the Indian market, value. Let me explain. One of the main reasons why the Brio didn't catch on was because of the interior. Now don't get me wrong, the back seats are actually quite spacious and comfortable. Compared to like the i10 of the era, this was actually a very comfortable place. But uh, because of the stylish uh, exterior cues that this car has, the boot space is basically non-existent and well, the Indian market really likes a lot of features and this was a little lackluster compared to the competition at the time. Now, the front might have looked rather nice for the time, but it got very old very fast. Yes, you do get air conditioning, a radio unit and steering volume controls, but that was about it. Compared to the Hyundai i10 of that era, it used to get Bluetooth connectivity, a CD player, a rear window wiper and a lot of more things which attracted a lot of buyers. But if you're someone who rates looks on top rather than the functionality, well the Brio is just the car for you because look at this slick looking back end. It takes inspiration from cars like the Honda CRX which were some of the coolest cars back in the day. And these clear tail lights with this red center section gives it a very retro vibe which I absolutely love. Now if you go to the facelift Honda Brio, it gets more aggressive bumpers, a bit of an updated tail light and everything's a little bit more sporty. Uh, overall, I think so, it's a sick looking car, but of course the downside is, once you open the boot, you get 175 litres of boot space, which compared to a Corvette C8 is quite less because the Corvette has almost 300 litres of boot space. Well, that's a proper mid-engine sports car and this is an eco hatchback, but there's one more way to justify this car, it's while driving. Now under the hood, this thing has an engine called the L12 B3 uh, IV Tech, which is basically a 1.2 litre single overhead cam 4 cylinder engine and it's nothing really that special but paired to this slick 5 speed manual gearbox and a car weighing only 900 kilograms, well it's a peppy little thing this Brio. This thing produces around 90 bhp and 109 newton meters of torque which is quite a lot for such a light car. But the highlight of the Brio has to be its handling. Since this chassis is so square, this amazing steering wheel gives you so much feedback, you have the confidence to chuck it into a corner. And for some reason, it feels like the center of gravity in this car is quite low, which it might be. And well, when you push it into a corner, you can absolutely thrash it over there and the car somehow grips, which is quite surprising. Like I said, the highlight of this car is the handling and that comes down to this gearbox and the steering wheel. The steering wheel, first of all, I love the design of it. It has this little mesh area over here. It has the perfect 9 and 3 position. So you have the confidence to grab the steering wheel and chuck it into corners. And more importantly, the feedback of the steering wheel is really, really impressive, which means when you're chucking it into corners, the engagement is there between the driver and the car. I know exactly what the car is doing and what the front wheels are doing and that gives me the confidence to just send it through a corner. Then comes the gearbox. It's a 5-speed manual and first of all, I love the design of it. It has this golf ball kind of texture on top. 
uh, it's not too big and bulky like a lot of other cars and even the cover is really nice and retro and gives you vibes of the Honda Civics that you get in the West and it's one of the nicest gearbox I've ever I've ever felt because the sh the throws are super short that means you can row through the gears instantly and the engagement and the way it slots into gear is really satisfying even the noise that it makes that noise it's really nice the L12 engine is decent enough in this setup performance headers and intake and a good tune can easily push the output to over 100 horsepower which will elevate the driving experience to a different level but the most common way of increasing the power figures is by swapping the L15 engine found in the Honda City or the Honda Mobilio. The L15 swap into the Brio is one of the easiest swaps you can do. With most of the mounting points being there, no need for any sort of welding, cutting or anything else, a clean, direct swap with no hassle. The L15 instantly, without any mods, will push the power numbers up to almost 120 horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque and is a very responsive and highly strung motor. The modifications you can do to the L15 is endless. You can add headers, exhaust, whatever you want, but if you want to go all out, slap on a Garrett turbo with the mods needed to support that and you have a car producing close to 200 horsepower. There are some madmen who have done this build. Game Over Motorsports based out of Mumbai have taken a Brio, completely stripped it out, slapped on a Garrett Turbo, a standalone Haltech ECU and an exhaust system from Magnaflow. At 6 PSI of boost, this little rocket produces a wild 200 horsepower, pair that to a car that weighs basically nothing and slick tyres, this car managed to do a unhinged quarter mile time of 14.5 seconds and won the B5 category at the Valley Run. It's a shame that the Brio didn't catch on into India because this is one of the best little pocket rockets out there. Everything is just perfect when it comes to driving. The gear lever is in the correct spot, the steering wheel is in the correct spot and the driving dynamics are second to none. Yeah, the Polo is great, the Swift is great but since this is such a compact little car and this peppy little 1.2 litre engine is so much fun to rev through, well, this is one of the best cars you can buy and since it's underrated, the prices aren't haywire in the market currently. We have seen some insane builds from companies like Game Over Motorsports with their red little Honda Brio doing insane quarter mile times. Well, I mean, yeah, it's not a drag car, but the tuning potential with the Honda is, well, insane. I mean, the, you can turbocharge it, you can supercharge it, headers, exhaust, whatever you want, everything is available for this car. So if you're looking for a little hatchback, which is fun to drive and will put a smile on your face, the Honda Brio should be on top of your list.